Uh, welcome to the Casual Shanigans podcast, everybody. Podcast, you know, I mean, whatever, like, we're here, right? It's a podcast about stuff. We're here. We're a talking about it. podcast where one of us mentions that we should probably start, and Jeremiah tears himself away from Reddit <laughs> and just begins the intro without even looking away. Because I'm a professional. <laughs> Today I started a sentence in the middle of a meeting and can, looked down at my hands to see what I was going to type, looked up, finished the sentence while finishing another sentence typing with my hands, and they were both perfect. They were acceptable. But <laughs> anyway, so after that, you what know, you just about multitasking? that pretty rough intro. <laughs> I'm one of your hosts, Jeremiah. Uh, tonight I'm joined by the best beard in the business, Dave. I don't like that theme song, but I'm here. <laughs> And I'm also joined by, I had like 10 different nicknames I was going to try, but all of them were bad. The most operator beard in the business. We'll just go with Papa James. We'll just go with Papa James, spoken when disappointment, like children. like a true Papa would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, welcome to the podcast. Twitter is at Casual Shenaniga. We're on the iTunes. Watch YouTube, Casual Shenanigans. <laughs> Record live Thursday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All right. Yes. <laughs> now that the rigmarole has been carefully and thoroughly gone through, it's now time to hop into the main topic. Main topic. Like we always start with, we talk about <laughs> things. <laughs> I was going to say, our main topic as it always is, is user chosen. Here are your <laughs> options for the week. <laughs> We're going to talk about loot crates. Oh, wait. That was the other six podcasts we did on that. Six? Wow, you're cutting us a little bit low there, James. This is equally as disgusting. Well, all right, so let's just explain the problem for anybody who doesn't know. Cryptocurrency is taking off right now. Someone on Reddit described it really well. They said, right now, the crypto market is like a bunch of coked up headless chickens running around <laughs> believing that they're all geniuses because the whole thing is expanding on pure speculation, which is yeah. basically true. Uh, so the crypto market is fire right now, and there's about 400, 1,400 altcoins you could be investing in, which are all guaranteed to go up in value forever. Uh, and because of that, the price of GPUs has now skyrocketed again. My GTX 1080 Ti on eBay is going for about $1,200 right now, which is, insane. which is insane. Uh, the price of RAM has gone up, not strictly because of cryptocurrency, but because of some other factors that's been going up. Smartphones, apparently, is where the shortage is coming from. Yeah. They're blaming it on smartphones. And any pow right. power-efficient GPUs, their values have exploded again after settling down for a couple of months. So I guess we can answer the short question first. Is it a bad time to build a gaming PC? It's a terrible time. Uh, to build a new gaming PC, Yeah. to be clear. There's plenty of GPUs yeah. that are like just power inefficient that they're not really in the sweet spot and you can pick one up like GTX 970s, 980s aren't going for that much. Um, you could easily get a 780 Ti if you're going for like a, a slightly older rig. Like there's, you know, there's plenty of awesome options you can buy. And of course, the rest of par the parts you could get used aren't that bad. And CPUs haven't really gone up in values like hard drives. Great time. Cases. Great time. Power supplies. Great time. It's pretty much RAM and GPUs, really bad time to buy. Which brings us to Dave and James, who are currently buying or building computers. Uh, Dave, why don't you run us through yours? <laughs> that's the key for mine, is that I'm building part of a computer. I'm doing the motherboard, uh, the RAM, unfortunately, and the CPU, just because uh, mine is, it was built in March 2014 with 2011 top tier parts. So I bought all used. I think the motherboard was new. But I basically bought a, a used CPU and an older socket to kind of go top tier without spending the top tier money. Um, I think this is my first all new build since 2010. So it's it's been a while. Um, I ended up going with the 8700K for my CPU, which is the uh, the current best gaming CPU. It's hexacore with hyper threading, so it is going to be fantastic at rendering. Especially seeing the turbo boost at stock is 4.7 gigahertz. <laughs> it's disgusting. Um, and I've seen people overclock this thing to 5 gigahertz pretty easily. The other one that I was looking at was the platform that's only, um, I think, less than five months old, six months old. But uh, the top tier CPU for that was the, uh, oh, what was it? I my PC part liquor. 
PC part liquor. <laughs> Sorry. That's, that's a different again. kind of website. <laughs> what was this? <laughs> I kind of like that, actually. Why? Yeah, it was, it was this. <laughs> that's, that's hilarious. That's why. The 7820X was the, uh, the other top tier when I was looking at. That's an eight core. There's a few problems, though, with going with this one. First of all, it's the newer platform, so it's, it's less tested. Um, it is their like top tier platform, which in the past, like my current computer has had problems like finicky USB, stuff like that. Additionally, um, those two extra cores were going to cost me about 20% gaming performance compared to what I actually ended up buying. So I'm like, it's really that I have a moment where I'm like, I need this render to be done 15% sooner, you know, but I still play games like Arma that can really use that per core speed. So I, I went with the, the Hexacore, actually. I think it's going to be just fine. Um, and someone else was also saying on some of the comparisons for these CPUs that the 7820X uses a mesh architecture to talk between the cores, which is less efficient for gaming as well. Um, How much more was that processor, too? Oh, yeah. It was also an additional $210, $220. Yeah. yeah. And then the motherboard was going to be an extra $100. <laughs> so it's... <laughs> Yeah. So I saved about 350 bucks by not doing that as well for more gaming performance. So <clears throat> um, the other thing that made me laugh comparing those two sockets was that someone's like, oh, you really ought to go for the top top end, like eight core CPU. Sure, the platform is less tested in you know, that that newer, more expensive platform and, and socket. But you'll have more options for upgrading in the future. And I just laughed. I'm like, Intel changes sockets every six months. If you buy an Intel CPU, you are never going to upgrade it. Yeah, you're no, never going to. The only way you're going to upgrade an Intel CPU, in my opinion, is you, let's say you do a build with the i3, and then you keep that for four or five years, and then you buy whatever the high-end CPU was in the socket, like just to stretch more life out of the system because the high-end one could be twice as good, <laughs> right? So you could theoretically yeah. keep a motherboard for like seven or eight years without much problem if you start with a low CPU and get up to a high one. You're buying the best CPU on that socket. That's the only CPU you're ever going to buy for that socket. Like, same with mine. I've got a 4790K. Yep. There's nowhere to go. Like, <clears throat> when I get rid of this, when this CPU is not fast enough, I've got to go to a different CPU and different motherboard. So it is yep. what it is. It's fine, though. I mean... It, I don't know. When it comes to motherboards and CPUs, backwards compatibility is nice, but you can keep a CPU for a really long time. Like, it doesn't oh, really yeah. necessarily need to be backwards compatible. And you could sell yours. You'll probably get for your CPU and motherboard. You'll probably get what four hundred bucks, three hundred. Wait for my current, my current one. Yeah. No, the CPU is worth ninety bucks on average. Really? Yeah, because don't forget, this is a two thousand eleven CPU. I know, but it's a really good CPU. It is. It's very good. How much is the motherboard just, worth? Same, about ninety hundred bucks. Wow! If I'm doing a Potato Masher X series, I bet it would, I bet it would kind of crush in one of those, wouldn't it? That would be insane. Do, do, do. But you're buying new parts, right? Next time, uh, we'll see when the launch video comes out. We'll see how the <laughs> old used Potato Masher compares against the best gaming console ever built. No spoilers. <laughs> Although right oh. now, it just the GPU is worth almost five hundred dollars in the Masher Pro. So who knows? <laughs> How does that work when your part? <laughs> Look, like I paid a year and five, four months ago, I paid 220 bucks for it. I can't help that the market's gone insane since then, and NVIDIA hasn't released anything. Well, actually, we're pretty much we're due for their next like GPU release. Probably announcements in March, they're thinking. Like soft launch in April, full launch in May, June, as usual. That's the rumor mill I've been hearing, but I'm, you mentioned RAM again. I wanted to say I have 32 gigs of DDR3 right now, which I paid $75 per uh, 16 gig set for. So I have, I have four DIMMs, eight gigs each. Those $75 sets are now worth about $125 per set. So I'm going to make a profit on selling my used RAM that I've been using for years. Like a significant profit, like a 30% profit. <laughs> Ram's in a weird place right now. It's a weird place. Now, James, what are you up to? I know you've been looking at some stuff. Uh, you know, I'm I'm really torn right now because I really wanted to do a, basically a from scratch build. 
Yeah, like everything. Um, yeah. But so, I, with go ahead. No, no, sorry, I, I interrupted you. Go ahead. I was to say, with prices being as they are, I don't know if I just need to like sit and wait for something to come quickly in stock and grab it, like a GPU, or if it's just easier for me to just buy a pre-built. So you have a 970, right? Yeah. What do you? How much better do you want your next computer to be? Because you have a 2500K and a 970, so I'm guessing at 1080p you're still doing okay, right? Like you're not. Yeah. Okay. But VR, VR I want to be able to play everything at the higher settings. Okay. Is your CPU holding you back or is it GPU? It, it, well, the CPU is holding me back in like Arma and stuff like that. Are you not overclocked? So the, no. Okay. Can but you, it's, a, it's a two series, so it's time to upgrade. Okay. Um, do you have an overclockable motherboard? Just out of curiosity. Okay. Cause I'll say the 2,500 K is overclocked like beasts. Like if you had an overclockable motherboard, you could probably easily get a year or two more out of it. If you were wanting to like, just hold and wait for stuff to stay. I don't, I'm, I'm, re I'm ready to okay. start doing something. So with, so the good news is CPUs are pretty competitive right now. Um, there's some awesome Ryzen and Intel stuff. And you like, you've already, you've shown us some stuff you've looked at, like you can do fine on CPUs, motherboards, Ram is going to be more expensive, but if you're only getting 16 gigs, which I'm guessing you're only, it's, yeah. it's tolerable at 16. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's still getting close to $200, no matter what you do. It is $200. Like unless you buy literally like stock, non overclockable DDR4, it's going to be, over which I'm fine doing that. Yeah, like if you're not overclocking your CPU, you can buy like just stock, like was it 2600 hertz RAM? You get 2133 if you want it. Or, so, that's true. Yeah. So does a RAM matter for overclocking? Yes. Okay, so okay. tell me how. Well, it also depends on your chipset too. So Ryzen RAM, right. especially if you want to overclock, you need DDR. Well, you don't need. You really should get DDR4 3000 megahertz or, or faster. Um, of course, you need to get a motherboard that supports the faster RAM because not all of them do. Um, but basically, bargain basement RAM is not going to be as stable when you overclock. Uh, that's like a really big generalization. So probably a lot of people are listening to this are yelling, that's not true at their computers. Because <laughs> I overclocked my processor f just fine on DDR3 uh, 1333 RAM. Like, you can definitely do it. Um, but if you want better overclocking results, better RAM is going to help. And for a Ryzen build, like Ryzen builds are very susceptible to poor RAM. Like that'll definitely knock your is, performance down. Is it accurate that everything over 2666 is overclocked? I don't know about that. On DDR3, it would have been. DDR4. Right. Um... Well, okay, so skimming, skimming, skimming. Um, DDR4 only operates like it actually, the actual speed is 800, between 800 and uh, 2133 megahertz, but you double it. So it's DDR4 1600 through DDR4 4167, which I've never seen. Um, but I'm not sure. For, for regular gaming performance, if you're not overclocking, faster RAM really doesn't make a difference because I went from 1333 to 2400 and it really wasn't that big of a change. Like for gaming, there was no difference. Um, for completely loading up my RAM with applications and stuff, like when I was doing Premiere rendering and everything is completely at 100%, the faster RAM absolutely made a difference in me being able to actually use my desktop. Um, yeah. So quality of life for me, it, like that definitely mattered. Um, but for regular gaming, I would just buy mid-range and be happy. Do I have to be happy or can I just? You can just buy mid-range. <laughs> okay, thanks. <laughs> make no promises. I'm not going uh, to make you be happy. So I, I've been debating between 8600K if I build and 8700K. And 8700K all the way up, huh? Yeah, I mean, it's just, it's going from one to the other. That'd be quite a leap. Well, here's a thought, James. The Was it the 8400, Dave? The 100, about $200 uh, hexacore? Non-overclockable? Uh, I'm not entirely sure on that one. 
it's a really great value. Here, yeah, the i5-8400 is an awesome value processor. It's a 2.8 gigahertz, 4 gigahertz turbo processor, um, and it's 200 bucks. So for 60 more bucks, though, I could get 800 megahertz stock and have the capability to overclock yeah. significantly more. Yeah, that's that's pretty compelling, I think, for the price difference. The only <laughs> reason I would go with the 8700 is for video editing. Right. Which makes sense. But how much of that do you do on your home computer? Um, not that much right now, but it would allow me to do more at home. I mean, I can take my laptop home, but <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Um, okay. So anyway, getting us back on track here. So James, would you be open to build buying everything new except your GPU? No, no. Okay. So it, everything's got to be new. It's well, yeah, pretty much. Cause I don't want to get a 980 or something like that. I, I want to take advantage of the newer series. You could get a 980 Ti. That's what a 1070 is. To some degree, but there's a little bit of a little bit of a difference. Little bit. But it, it's really, it's not much considering the prices. You're going like, yeah, how much is a 980 Ti these days? Have you looked? Uh, between 280 and 350 on eBay. Hold on. How much is a 1070 going for? Too much. Exactly. Yeah, it's disgusting. Uh, are, are you sure that's the prices for 980 Ti? Unless they've gone up more today. <laughs> I checked just a couple days ago. Um, let me see. I'm going to look at sold listings for the last... <laughs> I'm like afraid to hear this. All right, it's not, uh, I mean, it's not bad, three, but it's going oh, up. 380, 435, 500, 450, 462, 380, 500, 425. Yeah, so <laughs> <clears throat> this heathen country 390 375 360 okay apparently they've gone up in the past <laughs> few days gosh it, it's insane how little stock what's wrong with you guys companies have and so it's not just the inflation of the prices it's they're just not available anywhere like there may be four in stock at new egg with like <laughs> 75 that are like Auto notification when it comes to stock or something. And it's that way at like Newegg, any other PC uh, place, Adorama, B and H, Best Buy. I'm going to now in stock.net and there are two ten sixties in stock. Ten sixties are ten sixties are fine. I've been able to find a lot more of those. Yeah, but here's a three gig ten sixty Zotac Mini at Newegg for two hundred and ninety dollars for the three oh gig my model. Gosh. <laughs> Every yes. day we move farther from God. <laughs> have you have you looked up a 1070 lately? Yes, none of those are in stock either. Um, but now, the ones that are in stock are like seven eight hundred dollars. Now on the plus side, you can get a 1070 Ti from Newegg for five twenty four. Is it in stock right now? Yes. Are you sure? Newegg says it's in stock, and when I go to Newegg, it says it's in stock. Okay. Now the picture they have looks like a render. So no promises. <laughs> and it's You're a, getting a pre-order. And it's a stock cooler. No, I mean, they're out. The cards are out. And it says it's in stock. It says it's not a pre-order. So I ain't telling you that's what the deal is. But yeah, 1080s, uh, there are none in stock. 1080 TIs. Let's see. Newegg has one in stock for $900, brand new. The I mean, NVIDIA everyone, store has a Founders Edition. Can you link me to the 1070 Ti? Yeah. Because I don't see it at all. Well, how am I supposed to? Where, where do you want me to? I'll drop it in the. <laughs> Post it in the main podcast chat. So oh, you know what? You it. know what? It, you have to click in to get to the, the add to cart. Like some of the other ones have the add to cart just in the menu. Uh huh. There's a couple that you have to uh, click into. I tagged you in the um, the live chat thing. And actually, one of the reasons that I went ahead and bought my CPU as well, because I was going to sit on that for a few weeks and see if all the Intel news with the um, the patch for the exploit, if that was going to drop CPU prices. But looking yeah. around, 
apparently the A700K has been mostly out of stock since it launched in October. It's only over the last month or so that stocks have kind of leveled out. And seeing everything else is just in a weird place. I was like, I, I don't want to get stuck with a motherboard and RAM and all the CPUs out of stock. So I said, forget it. So yeah, the dilemma I've been having is I could forego having the overclockability mm-hmm. and buy a pre-built for about $1,100. Mm-hmm. And that would come with what in your pre-built? 70, I think it's 7700K and mm-hmm. a 1070. Okay. 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 256 SSD with a 2 terabyte hard drive. Is this the uh, Lenovo 720 Cube by any chance? No, it's not. <laughs> <laughs> I offered to buy that, Dave. Yeah, well, all of your people contact my people, and then we'll wait for a while. <laughs> Yeah, I'm looking yeah, on, on CyberPower PC, and you could actually yeah, was, make a solid case for a CyberPower PC build. Like, as long as you like replace the case immediately so no, no one knows you bought a CyberPower. No, seriously, go look, look nice? go look at CyberPower PC. I'm looking down. I'm kind of surprised. Link me. Are you going to the... Uh, why do I got to do all this work? Because Copy. you're the one that found it. Control C, it. Control V. I hope you're happy. <laughs> <laughs> doesn't help that uh all custom gaming computer websites are still horrible oh good you can buy them on payments that's that's great <laughs> oh man yeah it doesn't look terrible wow compared to the cyber power of like 2006 era this looks like grown-up computers yeah they, they really do holy crap and those ones ahead at Best Buy were horrid. I think even at like 16, I would have been embarrassed to have one of those cyber power PC computers back in the day. Says the guy with a 14 pound laptop. <laughs> a laptop's only six pounds, six and a half. No, no, the old one. Oh, oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was almost. <laughs> you're you're saying, you're saying like yeah. 2006 era. <laughs> yeah, that's when I bought it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. But it had that nice brushed aluminum chassis on it. It was subtle. And actually, one of the reasons I bought it was a hypersonic was because it was the Clevos that Alienware was building at the time, but without all of the LEDs on it. I actually bought it specifically because it didn't look like an Alienware, but it was as powerful as one. So yeah, Jeremiah. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. You showed me. Uh... So yeah, that's where I'm at. Okay. Yeah, James, I would think about a pre-built right now. Like, if you're going to build any time in the next six months, almost, it's just... I mean, technically, I could build everything except the GPU for now. And just keep using your regular GPU and wait? Yeah. But you don't want yeah. to, do you? I, I'm ready for that performance boost. How much for... you want to let that 970 and 2500K go for? <laughs> 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 it's like watching Joel's eggnog video again. All right. Uh, you guys ready to move on? Yeah. Yeah, let's do it. The prices may be incredible. We may be tired of our old busted rigs. But what have we been playing on them for the past week? This has been a smooth segue into what are you playing this week? A part of the podcast <laughs> where we talk Would about... Would you hear my is his segue <laughs> right after he says it? <laughs> well, I didn't want to draw too much attention to it, but since you did, Dave, I did think it was pretty good. All right. It wasn't bad. It wasn't All bad. right. Uh, James, what are you playing? I played just a little bit of Wildlands. God, I got to look now. I mean, it's pretty safe uh, to say you played some Wildlands. That's... Yeah, I mean that's always safe to say. I haven't played. I think Wild we Lake played a little bit of more, a little bit more Dying Light. Had a great time playing it. Um, I don't know that I played much else. Played some Arma. That was fun. And <laughs> that pause. <laughs> you know, I'm thinking of Battlefield. I was like, I didn't really. Yeah, it was. Yeah, okay. it, it was a rough match. Well, Battlefield. Oh, well, James, now that your stuff is fixed in Arma, we did a little bit of a different mission. Why don't you walk the Arma noobs through? Did you enjoy that? Did you not enjoy it? Man on the ground who's not used to Arma? What if we do? <laughs> it's the one where we had the medical thing. We had to go pick up the guys. Uh, their convoy got hit, and then we realized that they were all dead. 
and then we went from there to assault the base. Yeah, so my squad, instead of like scout scoping out the facility where we were already getting shot from, decided to hop, everybody, get everybody hop in the vehicle and drive straight up to the building and then get out. <laughs> so my experience wasn't amazing, per se. You know what? I think James would probably really enjoy being the guy who rides in the chopper and like yells things over the radio and coordinates and does adult stuff. That's what I do in Wildlands. <laughs> I mean, would you would you like that? Oh yeah, because you could do that. Like I could stick you on a door gun with some responsibility if you want. <laughs> <laughs> on the door gun with some responsibility. Our finally <laughs> some responsibility. In Papa James. Well, I was telling Joel, and of course he thought you know this was hysterical, but I spent the first forty five minutes sitting in the passenger seat of the chopper, just looking at the map and a GPS and calling out radio orders and coordinating. And I honestly had a good time. Like it was, <laughs> yeah. Like I've I've always said, Jeremiah, that literally half of the fun in Arma is from the knowledge that you're essentially playing a scripted single player mission where all the pieces are performed by other people. I love that about Arma. Like the chopper pilots are your friends. Like, the commanders are your friends. When things go wrong, it's your friend's fault. <laughs> like, it's just, it's one big, like, moving set of cogs. Like, it's just really cool to me that you can do really complex missions, but everyone's, like, actually playing the individual roles themselves, right. including the ones that would normally be boring, like commanding. Like, that's important. And you can have fun doing it and do a good job at it. And you can also do a bad job at it. <laughs> it's part of the fun, I think, for Arma. Yeah. And I, I just, I don't know. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah, I guess that's all I have, have to say about that. But yeah, well, I think James was still was that. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> I'm James? sorry. Yeah, Thanks James. for finishing up my segment. That's cool. No, sorry. I'm sorry, James. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> and I think we played a little bit of Battlegrounds. Did we? A couple of few of us did with Debbie. Remember? Oh uh, yeah. Were you there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Was it me, you, Debbie, and? Yeah, that all sounds right. Was it uh, Tyler? Uh, maybe. Anyway. Oh, I tried. We tried. Uh, was it this week or the week before Escape from Tarkov? It's been. A, it's. No, no, no. It's, it was me. And Shane and I tried it. Yeah. Oh. For you guys, it was more recently, I think. OK. Mm. It was. <laughs> All right. Next. <laughs> no, no. OK. Tell us a little more about it. Yeah. I want to hear about your thoughts on the loot system, James. So, well, let me tell you first, I got in the game and it was like. 1024 by 76 is 768 or whatever that yeah is. yeah and i'm trying to change and literally every time i tried to make a change it would crash the game <laughs> so i had to play my first like after doing that twice i just said fine i'll just play this way so i played my first round like that and it you think it had been pretty fast <laughs> that, that resolution but it was still pretty slow but um yeah it was okay I mean, I enjoyed the looting. I didn't enjoy having to, uh, like, analyze every little piece of thing you found to figure out what it is. It can like, be you dumbed can't down. pick something yeah. out. Like, you're like, oh, what's this funny, shiny thing? <laughs> oh, it's a bullet. <laughs> James, what is this? How you, like, shop for groceries? Like, you go in, pick a box of cereal off the shelf. You're like, hmm, this appears to be, I'm not sure. Give me a minute. <laughs> mm. Nope, still figuring it out. <laughs> like, it's just, I, I like that you have to search through bags. That part's cool. But then having to then analyze every single thing inside the bag, I think that's too far for the looting. So if they don't go open world, I definitely can say it's not a game for me. Like if they well, just it, do the, kinda, the raid size. It, it kind of is open world, isn't it? I mean, the, the different sections on the no. main map, do they connect to each other at all? Or is each that just a smaller map? Through the main, through the map. Hmm. They're instances. It's a, it's a rating system versus open world. You're going on like a, an RPG raid, basically. I've heard that they want to connect the individual maps. So there's like an exit point and you can like go to the next one. But it's still not going to be a seamless open world mm. at all. It's kind of immersion ru ruining. Immersion ruining. Oh, man. Man, that's that is like that's strong. <laughs> that's the death blow from James <laughs> <laughs> the gavel has fallen. <laughs> well, imagine if DayZ had that, where you're like you're running from Cherno to Electro, and you're like loading, loading, loading. Well, I mean, that didn't stop us from playing Half Life Two. 
But that's different. That's a that's a single player game. Exactly. Yeah. I, I think again, a big part of Daisy's draw was the persistence and the fact that it was all open world. In Tarkov, all the persistence is offline. And while I think it is cool to have like a, a pretty in depth like modding and tr- and trading and UI inventory thing again in the menus, it's like ah, I kind of want to like be forced to do that like in camp. You know, you set up your tent and you have to s- sort all your loot where there's still a threat. I just. Yeah, the persistence in Daisy remains the biggest draw for me. Well, so instance with, raids. With Daisy, you have to go out with your best weapons. You can't like run around with a hatchet and like, well, I've got all my good guns safe, and exactly. then literally, and then literally never use your good guns. Yeah, I can see the draw, and I do like some of what Tarkov's doing, but I think it's just not my it's not my style of the survival genre. It's a cool new take on it. They're doing some unique things, but it's just not. I'm like a for the most part. I told you guys is if that had come out while I was like before Daisy came out, if this was the first thing that came out, I probably would have thought it was amazing. But, exactly. But after so many years of so many different things, I'm just like, eh, I don't care. So it's that part of the podcast where Dave confesses something. My waveform is blank. What do you mean your waveform? <laughs> Did you check to see if you were recording when you said you were recording? When we're yeah, doing I'm all that check, check, check. Sure. Yeah. Wait a minute. So if you go back to the beginning of your timeline, you don't. Yeah, see- the way the waveform is totally blank. I'm gonna restart Audacity. Like it's it's nothing there. Well, I mean, at this point, <laughs> so this is- at this point, I'll just use the backup. You've got your backup. I would say going, just. Right? I would say just let it keep going and make sure see if it's not a glitch and take the gamble. Mm. No, nah, it was it was blank. From the, the wrong de- the wrong device ha- had been switched. Oh my my headphones. Disconnected, reconnected, mm. right after the podcast started. I wonder if it switched devices. This is a great episode. This is. Which, Jer- Jeremiah, have you gotten that at all with these? Um, I've had just just in the last week, something in my office is interfering with the wireless connection. As soon as the and check it, cleared, it just they started getting worse. And <laughs> no, um, no, I haven't, I, always feel, it. I haven't had any problems. I can make it. Let's say, just for example, all the way to the bathroom, still wearing them with no signal loss. Uh, I haven't yeah, had any interference I, yet, though. I've been using them since the beginning of no- November, and they've literally never lost connection until in the last week. Uh, during Arma, especially, it was like three times. I got like a really bad amount of static, and then got the, like the headset disconnected, and then static, and then it came back by itself. Huh. No, that's um, odd. Is it fully charged? I, I charged it last night, yeah. Oh, okay. I moved the receiver, I and again, I'm also having a problem with the with the receiver for this, where I have to unplug it from the USB and plug it back in. Sometimes I think this freaking motherboards USB problems are the issue. I am. This is the, this is the motherboard that Dave was trying to sell me. <laughs> but James, 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 oh. as long as you don't use any wireless headphones, VR devices, USB hard drives or USB accessories that draw a lot of power, you'll be fine. So literally everything I use. Cool. Mouse and keyboard. You'll be fine. Just don't use anything else. Yeah, I, I think it might be the USB. But I think, it, yeah, I see the waveform again. I think, I think when it reconnected, Audacity switched to the, to the headset. That's okay. I'm using a backup, and you've got your backup going, right? Backup crashed. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like it crashes a lot, and you don't tell me because you're like, well, I'm sure everything's fine. <laughs> I'm actually going to set a reminder here because I need to find a new backup game because Sid Meier's Railroads has been crashing how, in the background. How many hours are you up to on Sid Meier's Railroads? Uh, yeah, let's let's see real quick. And can it compete with your Fallout hours? 358 hours. Not even close then. Not even close to Fallout. But only about 80 of those hours are actual gameplay. (laughs) Only 80. All right, Dave, what have you been playing in between things crashing and you pining for a new computer? Justification. (laughs) Um, Joel and I played some more levels. Well, one level because it takes us two and a half hours to beat of uh sniper elite four and because the steam sale was still going on when we played this was like just a week and a half ago now i guess because the steam sale was still going on we continue our tradition of before we play our one level every three months we bought a bunch of cosmetic dlc for the game at 99 cents a pop we're having so much fun in the game that we just can't resist like they keep adding new guns and stuff to it um still an absolute blast it's one of those games that it's so much fun to keep playing when like things go wrong. Like we'll start out doing full stealth and then one of us will get spotted. And the other person has to like 
shoot a Nazi in the testicles with a slow motion camera to save them. And then the alarm goes off and ah, uh, like it's the same kind of uh, thing that I've seen people talk about dishonored where like the, uh, the game systems are so, um, man, how do I put it? How do the reviews put it? The game systems and, and how the mechanics and the AI works, like you can kind of learn how all those systems interact with, with each other. And then like when things go wrong, you can kind of figure out, um, how to deal with each different scenario as it's going wrong. And it's just really fun to, to play in a giant sandbox like that. So yeah, sniper elite for, Still tons of fun. We played some Battlefield on Sunday. That was a blast. I have a Battlefield recap video coming out tomorrow where I saved 350 gigs of Shadowplay clips from the last year of just like all the best like trailer moments and squad moments. It's like 18 minutes long. It's just like literally top cuts of 2017. Uh, it was a ton of fun to go back and watch through all that footage. Um, Speaking of Dishonored, I also started Death of the Outsider, which is the standalone expansion pack. I got a couple hours into that. I was worried that it would be a little bit rough going right from Dishonored 2 into the expansion. But you're playing as a new character, even though it is in the same city as the base game. There's new abilities, and they definitely added enough to make it feel different. Like You don't feel like you're just playing as like a, a different player's skin, basically. Um, it's been a blast so far. Dishonored. What an incredible series. So good. Um, on a more downer note, I also played Battlefront 2 last night on the PS4. My PS4 remains possessed, and it took Joel and I about 25 minutes to get into the same match together. The Battlefront UI is pretty awful, and I sat in queue for jo the game that Joel was already in for 15 minutes before the queue just disappeared. Like the little thing in the corner that says, you're now first in queue, just went away. For the next two minutes or so, I couldn't click on anything in the game. It suddenly went to a black screen with a little globe icon in the corner, like hologram globe that was like spinning. That screen remained with no information on it for about two and a half minutes before suddenly all of the audio exploded to life and there was a spawn screen in the match that Joel had just left thinking my game had crashed. <laughs> Why is there a load screen in the game that has zero information? On what the game is doing that lasts for more than two minutes budget um but yeah i don't know i i really can't say that the gameplay on the ground was anything mind-blowing but i will say that the new starfighter modes are fantastic because the maps are just more interesting they're objective based you're like flying into some of the capital ships there's tons of stuff going on and there's more depth to the starfighting in the first game so that part has been well worth it joel and i played like 45 minutes with just the starfighter mode and that's been fun that is what I've been playing this week. Um, other than like, a, you know, the Arma and Round of Two Wildlands, uh, I have played a little bit of The Witcher. And I'm also reading The Witcher Compendium right now. Thank you, Dave, for the borrow. Um, it is my honor. <laughs> I'm going very, very slow and I'm enjoying it. That's all I will say about that. Uh, and then playing more Divinity Original Sin 2 with Mark and Justin, which I'm having an absolute blast playing. I'm actually getting to the point where like, I was up late one night reading about best the best tank builds I could do online because I'm so not used to these types of games that I just don't know how to be good at them, uh, which Justin and Mark can tell you because I've accidentally healed Mark which poisons him <laughs> because he's a, uh, he's an undead, so that hurts him. And I've accidentally <laughs> healed him during fights probably 10 or 15 times now. <laughs> like, Mark will just come, oh, damn it! What happened? <laughs> and, like, his health is dropping, and I'm like, oh, shoot. <laughs> um, I'm just a helpful healer. <laughs> yeah, but... I'm just a console guy. <laughs> but we're having, we're having fun. We doubled back and went through uh, some of the sections we had trouble in before, now that we're a little higher, and we... <laughs> just murdered everything. And that was pretty good. Um, you know, the story is decent. It's a high fantasy story. I was explaining some of it to Debbie and I realized like how crazy some of it sounds. I was like, and Mark's an undead lizard and he has a cat <laughs> pet. He can summon and the pet can teleport places and then swap places with Mark. So anyway, <laughs> Uh, yep. <laughs> my uh, my second character, my alt character, is an elf named Sebel, and if she eats dead body parts, she can relive their memories and learn interesting things about the world. Cool. Also, she can summon an incarnate, which is like a little Tasmanian devil that inherits the physical properties of whatever you spawn him <laughs> on. So if you want a little fiery Tasmanian devil that shoots fireballs and taunts your enemies, you can get that. 
<laughs> and <laughs> so, yeah, it sounds totally nuts, but it's fun. It, it's a pretty good game. I'm like, I'm not a huge RPG guy, uh, but I can definitely see why people would really like this game or like people like these types of games. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that was a good summary. I like that. <laughs> would you play any other games based on that experience? Uh, it depends on the other games. I don't know. Like, what's like the did, does the multiplayer example or the mul- does the multiplayer component is that what drives you to to actually enjoy it, or would you sit and play on your own? Uh, that helps a lot. Okay. And it does. I mean, it does for a lot of games, but no, that um that definitely helps. Um, I'm having more fun than I would be on my own for sure. I just wouldn't say that. I, I mean, there's a lot of good, good games that are like the isometric style. Like yeah. pillars of eternity isn't like pretty amazing. Just the, but it's single player the production right? quality. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. So it was gripped on. Like, I'm, I'm curious if you would ever like move to one of those or if it's just like, uh, I don't know if I can do it on my own. I, I don't know that I would just because this game could be a hundred hours and I'll enjoy playing that with friends. Cause it's time spent with friends gaming. I don't know if I'll ever put that much time into that many games just on my own, though. Like, right. I think I would just get you know, distracted by whatever new thing came out and want to move on to it. <laughs> I, I just can't. I don't spend that much time playing games that I can't go through multiple 100 hour games. Like, I put over 100 hours into The Witcher 3 the first time around over two years. Like, and that was a pretty big deal for me. So it's very rare for me to put that much time into something. But if it's like every week on a regular bit, like we have our, our standing divinity original sin two date where everyone hops in and plays <laughs> you know that's a little bit different so same thing with arma um i don't know I, if there's a bunch of other good if there's other good co-op ones i'd try it i mean me and mark like if the, the dark souls remaster is has co-op that actually works now like mark and i are probably going to co-op that i just i really like co-op and i don't play that much single player that's the long and short of it you mentioned Witcher, so I gotta ch- uh, just chime in real quick. Of I, course you do. I, I completely forgot. I realized last weekend, uh, after talking about Witcher, the revenue thing on Steam last week, I was like, crap, I haven't played since August. Have not even launched the game since August. So I fixed that on Saturday. I played for like three hours. Jeremiah, you know all those floating loot chests in Skellige? There's like a hundred plus of them. I have maybe 10 left. That's been a bit of a grind. But I make up for it by whenever I go to one of the islands nearby to like stop and drop off loot, I'll like take some screenshots, wander around, get immersed. But it's a lot of just holding down W while surfing Reddit because it's just open ocean going to the floating treasure chest. <laughs> Probably one of the worst design systems in the game. But I want to see all those check marks cleared. And, oh... I, it did make up for it. The last one, because a lot of them, you go out to the middle of the ocean, and it's almost always the same. There's like a bunch of floating debris, like planks and barrels. There's some circling, um, what is it, the, the sirens, siren creatures, like swirling around to attack you. And there's loot chests attached to like some of the floating debris with ropes. So like you fight the, the sirens, you dive, you open the chest. They're almost all like that. Mm-hmm. The last one that I did... I come through like this huge thunderstorm, like waves rolling. I'm like, I see something on the horizon. What is that? It was a massive Viking longship just out in the middle of the ocean. I mean, above the water. Yeah. Like it was, it was there. Like it was on top of the water on fire. Like the masts were on fire. There were bodies all over the deck and a bunch of sirens were like circling it. It was like a drift in the ocean on fire. That's a cool Easter egg. I was like, holy crap, like it's been literally 50 of those stupid just like little floating treasure chests like with nothing else there and all of a sudden burning long ship in the middle of the ocean. But then the treasure was attached to floating crates around the burning long ship. So you still had to dive to get the treasure. I was like, all right, <laughs> this is a really cool find after doing so many of the same ones. Uh, but yeah, it was, oh man, it was good to be back in Witcher. That game continues to please me in every possible way. Except every financially. <laughs> All right. It is now time for the news. News time. 
All right. Uh, we already hinted at it, and most of you who are interested have probably already heard it. But Dark Souls 1 is being remastered for the Switch, the PS4, the Xbox One, and the PC. And that was announced today. Um, yeah, 60 FPS support. Supposedly it'll really work on PC this time. It'll support resolutions beyond 720. And it will be on the Switch and current gen consoles. What do you guys think? Oh, and also the Dark Souls trilogy is coming to the PS4. I wish you guys could have seen Joel's face when I told him because he had just gotten back from getting coffee. I was like, oh, hey, Joel, uh, Dark Souls remaster is coming out. And he's like, what? And like Jedi. I was like, oh, it's uh, it's on the newest Dark Souls engine. What? 60 FPS. Ah! It's like just like a noise at that point. I was like, oh, it's also on the switch. Ah! 30 <laughs> like FPS. A, oh, yeah, yeah, 30 FPS and 720p on the switch when you're mobile. But still like that's that's fine. It's that's pretty crazy. I would not have guessed that. But oh my gosh, his he almost killed Debbie because he he rushed to his laptop to like like make sure it was real. And it wasn't just lying straight to his face. And when he realized it was real, he went to like jump out from the desk in his chair, like to whip around and be like, "It's real!" Right as Debbie walked by, and he just slams his chair right into Debbie. <laughs> he was so excited. My headset just did the same thing. Hmm. <clears throat> I wonder what is causing the interference. Weird. You changed anything? Okay, now that I think about it, it is sitting about 10 inches away from my Metal Ranger Dave poster that I haven't hung up yet. <laughs> I wonder if that's actually causing it. Huh. <laughs> Move it. That's nowhere else to put it at the moment. <laughs> On the wall. Hmm. On the podcast, yeah. go ahead and hang it. <laughs> should I should I show it off on stream? I don't think anybody's seen that poster yet. I don't think we should show it yet. No, nah, you should wait. Yeah, yeah, we'll wait. Yeah, I have a metal Ranger Dave poster that's that's gonna be revealed at some point. Anyway. Sorry, which news item were you on? <laughs> uh the next news item. This is kind of a short one. Uh Total Biscuit tweeted out uh, actually talking to Jim Sterling. Um, he said, not willing to say who at Blizzard told me, but prior to the launch, they were seriously concerned the money would run it and were having to push back against selling characters. They had to fight for cosmetic only boxes with the business folks, which is very Ooh. interesting because so many other games have obviously gone the other way. And you think a yeah. company with as much money as Blizzard slash Activision would be like, yeah, do whatever's best for the game. Like you don't have to make the extra money. You would have thought in the past, at least. But Overwatch is an incredibly successful game now by any metric. I mean, it's one of the most successful games ever and has spawned esports. There's the Overwatch League. Like, Overwatch is doing awesome. What are the odds all that would have happened uh, when, you know, yeah, if there was pay to win elements anywhere in it? I don't know. I think that's kind of interesting. And I'm glad they didn't go that way. I don't really play a lot of Overwatch, but it's just cool to hear that. You hear about all the ones that do bad or they make questionable decisions. It's nice to hear about uh, a developer that actually fought back on that and was successful because there's plenty of them, I'm sure, have fought about it. And then the business guys are like, nope, got to do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So anyway, uh, next <clears throat> bit of news. The Total Vive. War? Nope. The Vive Pro has been announced. <laughs> Spoilers. I'm just. I'm if ready. you would I'm like ready. to, if you'd like to add your item to the list, you may, and we will read it in the order they appear. But for now, are you looking? It's next in the list, Jeremiah. Oh wait, yeah, podcast. Oh, I'm sorry. There's no the title with it. It was just the Reddit link. Post. I'm sorry, I missed it. Dave, Dave, ignore everything I said. You are correct. Go right ahead. Oh, I will not. I will not ignore what you said. I am going to take what you said. I'm going to hold it deep inside. And let the bitterness grow. Sounds about right. Yep. Uh, surprise announcement from Total War, and a surprise for their social media manager too. They announced a new historical Total War, and it was a bit of a disaster. I don't know if you saw, Jeremiah, that they were trying to do like a 24-hour countdown. Mm -mm. Did you see any of that? No, I did not. Yeah, probably not because it lasted 10 minutes. <laughs> they, had <laughs> scheduled, they had scheduled tweets like, new full historical Total War title to be announced. And then it was like, you go to, it was like TotalWarAnnouncement.com or something like that. And you had to sign up for the newsletter to get like an alert when the countdown timer ended. It was like 23 hours and 45 minutes remaining when I signed up. Like I put in my email like, oh, man, finally a new a new Total War. And then I literally closed that tab and Twitter like 
scrolls down like with the next row of tweets and it published the tweet that was meant for the next day that literally had the name of the game, a link to the Steam page, and the embedded trailer in the tweet just playing right there. Mm. Mm. 10 minutes after they posted the countdown timer. So I went back and refreshed the countdown page and it was just the page about the game. Like they just literally threw their hands in the air and said like it's it's announced whatever. But man, they screwed that up bad. 10 minute countdown <laughs> for 24 hours. Um it's Total War 3 Kingdoms. It's set in China in uh which century was it? The same time period as Dynasty Warriors. Um, so, the, yeah, the 14th centuries when the book was printed. Um, yeah, it's it's honestly, as you can tell, the fact that I'm now lost in Wikipedia trying to find the information, it's not a time period that I'm super familiar with. But people are quite excited, and the trailer did look pretty fantastic. It's not any of the eras that I would have guessed, so I'm just kind of like, I don't know lost on what I feel about the game. Like I just need to dig into the history, I think, to appreciate what's what's gonna be happening. But with that kind of standalone mini Total War, that's two historical Total Wars coming out this year because they say that uh, this Three Kingdoms Total War is coming out in twenty eighteen as well. So we have in quarter two, I think it is, the Britannia Total War, which is just kind of like a little spin off, like smaller scale one. And then a full historical title uh, sometime this fall. Cool. Good times. All right. Uh, the Vive Pro has been announced. It's a new headset upgrade from Vive. It has dual OLED displays with a crisp picture resolution of 2880 by 1600, which is a 78% increase in resolution over the current headset. Um, it also <laughs> has integrated headphones. Uh, they have a built-in headphone amp. Um, it has a new head strap, which is supposed to be more comfortable. Uh, it has a sizing dial for better size. Um, no idea on the price. They've also announced the official Vive wireless adapter, which is pretty cool. So you've been able to buy third-party chips for a while, but this is something that will actually make the headset completely 100% reliable wireless, and it's sold <laughs> by Vive. What are you going to run it with? What do you mean? <laughs> How are you going to get a GPU to run it? <laughs> oh, I mean, no, they say that, but like my, the 1060 in the Master Pro ran the Vive, everything I wanted to play, literally zero problems. Like my 1080 Ti was on 30, 40% usage most of the time. Yeah, like but it really, it just wasn't that bad. How much did you pay for your 1080 Ti? 700 bucks. Okay. But the 1060 was some price between 220 and 500 dollars depending <laughs> on what day it is uh, but this is that was for the original resolution yeah yeah it was and this is a 78 percent increase i'm just saying i it's definitely for premium customers i'm sorry i said it that way they said <laughs> they, they said they believe there's there's a space in the market for the highest end headset that costs more and delivers a better experience and i think that's been shown because they were outselling oculus for a long time before oculus got really serious on the price so i, I think they're they're right about that and they want to differentiate themselves. Now the Oculus is selling more than them because they got very aggressive on price and came out with awesome motion controllers. I think they're now trying to reposition themselves with, look, we're the first ones to a Gen 2, and it has all these improvements um, for people who want to just buy the best. Like if you were going to buy, pay 800 bucks a year ago for a Vive, pay 800 bucks now for this one, if it ends up still being 800 bucks. And the wireless adapter, obviously, that's just a no-brainer. I mean, that's... Oh, yeah. If, if there's no... Correct. Lag. Although supposedly if there's the, even a little bit of lag, it's going to be nauseating. Supposedly, the aftermarket ones you can get for um, the first five are pretty good. So like two millisecond lag at it. Hmm. Oh my! There's a yawn. So that was a good one. All right, and then the last bit of news. Uh, this is again not really that significant. You know, news wise, but The Witcher 3 was one of Steam's best selling games of 2017. I love it. That's all. No, uh, no microtransactions, no loot crates, no expansions. They did nothing that year in 2017 besides still be good. Now, to be fair, Ark Survival Evolved was also one of the top selling games of the year. So, like, you can't win them all, <laughs> but <laughs> so people generally don't suck, but some do still. Yeah. Most uh, of them. 
And H1Z1 was also up there. So like, you know, Bye-bye. yeah, but the Witcher three is up there. It's pretty awesome. Oh yeah. It's easy to forget that like for the first three months of 2017 up through March, H1Z1 was like exploding. Was it? I mean, yeah, uh, there's an article done in, I think June about the rise and fall of H1Z1 until battlegrounds launched in early access. They were heading towards new steam records. H1Z1 was, Hmm. It was huge in like December, January, February, and March of last year. And then when Battlegrounds came out, it plateaued for a while. No, actually, no, it, it kept going for like a month or two. It was like around April it plateaued, and then May it started to drop, and then it went off of a cliff over the summer. Um, yeah, apparently H1Z1's decision to break the Battle Royale part into its own game was a good idea. So it got him a bit of time. Uh, also, a bit of news I just saw on Reddit. Um, Dark Souls Remastered on PC will have a 50% loyalty discount if you already own the Steam version. So instead of being 40 bucks, it'll be 20 Will it be? Is it 40 is what they're saying? Yep. That's pretty nice. good. That's not bad. So buy it now if you don't own it. Yeah. And they say it's coming out May 25th. And not they bad. say there'll be dedicated servers. Nice. All right. Well, we'll see if it actually like. It's worth it just for them changing out the, uh, the inv- not invading. What is it called? Summoning. Summoning. We don't. Just for yeah. Changing. We don't know how much they're actually going to change with that though. I thought they they mentioned that it's going to be passworded like three. Did they? It's, yeah, uh, that's okay. what I thought I I'd seen too. Yeah. Okay. Because thirty percent of my time playing Dark Souls was trying to figure out what spot to stand in to hook up. <laughs> I'm, I've seen lots of people assuming it's going to be like good co-op, but I don't know. I'm skeptical. We'll see what happens. I'd love to play through it though because that's the only one I've never beaten. I've played some of it, but I just I can't get through it because it was so bad on PC. Yeah, yeah. Speaking of games to play, can we Dave, please go ahead and set this up. Jeremiah has offered you his Xbox. Oh. oh. All you have to do is go to GameStop and buy the $10 disc. Yeah, I'm going to build this new fancy computing machine and then borrow Jeremiah's Xbox to play a 10-year-old game. Now, wait. But I, I kind of want to, actually. Red Dead Redemption, there's a special Xbox One version, right? Well, when you put a disc in, it automatically connects you to the store and then downloads that version. So you do have to have the disc in for it to play. But it is, it's not reading off the disc. No, no, I'm saying, like, there's an Xbox One version, right? Like, you can't just put in the Xbox 360 version. There's an actual separate Xbox One version. Right. It, okay. Like I said, you put the disc in. Uh-huh. And when it recognizes that, if you want to install the game, when you go to click install, it then starts downloading it from the marketplace. Oh, oh, okay. Okay, so you put in a disc, and depending on what system you have, it's going to go get that one. What? Never mind. <laughs> 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 I do not know. Uh, okay. Ben, Ben, to answer your question, yeah, Ben, so the toughest thing with wireless, though, is the latency. Any latency will make you nauseated. Yeah, that's why I'd be, I'd be skeptical about the wireless thing. Like I said, the, uh, the third party ones that have been made only added like a couple milliseconds of latency. So it is very doable, but let's just see if it's it's actually any good. What happens when it disconnects? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, you start vomiting. I mean, you <laughs> could be bad. You guys know how I feel about anything wireless. Like, there's no reason to do anything wireless if you can do a wired version, in my opinion. There's so few wireless things that I think are actually good. Like, I'd have an Ethernet cable plugged into my phone if it wasn't inconvenient. I mean, I'm hard connected to my internet here. I mean, that's <laughs> that's mostly for speed, but. I use my neck. I use my I use my yeah, I use my wireless headphones all the time. Me and too. I just I just, it, and I just connect them to wire sometimes if I don't feel like charging it or forgot to charge. It's just it's that little bit. It's that two percent more hassle, even with ones that work well, and I just don't like it. That two percent hassle allows me to walk out of the room if I need to and still listen to the conversation. Well, now I will say, wireless headphones I really can stand behind are my Plantronics rig. 800 HDs, uh, which no, but these, these really are the first wireless headphones where I thought the quality and the reliability was good enough that 
it wasn't, it was like you're saying, James, where there's pretty much no downsides. Of course, now Dave apparently is running into some downsides, so that sucks. Yeah, like like a minute ago, I got more static. I really wonder if it's that stupid metal poster. <laughs> just you can't like literally move it like over to the, like the window or something, just just for scientific yeah, purposes. I, yeah, yeah. Let me move Do it, it for science and all the listeners that are right. listening right now for audio. <laughs> yeah, like I feel like that being right next to the uh, to the receiver <laughs> might be causing problems. I just wanted to get bent. I gotta figure out where to put it. Okay. I'm gonna forget today. It's on the bookshelf. I'm like, we should get a book and just slice my hand open. <laughs> All right. I mean, it sounds good right now, but we'll see if I get any more interference. This is fun. It really could be the USB as well, because, yeah, I just don't trust this motherboard's USB at this point. All right, anything else you guys want to talk about tonight? Dave, I don't think Red, so. Make Red Dead happen, man. I, I think I will, actually, yeah. I think I will. I mean, yeah, it is cheap, and Dave, I will say, like, I think it's something you will really appreciate. Let's just put it that way. Joel's already made me watch, like, the Entering Mexico scene, like, the entire six-minute montage on YouTube. <laughs> I've already played a chunk of the game i guess <laughs> might as well i, I, I was in. watching through footage as i was like talking to you about it the other day we were talking about jeremiah's xbox and stuff and i was like man there's really not that many good western games where you can just explore not that yeah. there's a lot of exploring in the game but i could see you riding oh, through I the desert at night <laughs> <laughs> Remember, James, how in Witcher 3 I stopped going to the question marks and just started following creek beds into the forest just yeah. to see what was there? Yeah, I can find a way. <laughs> yeah, I think that about covers it all for me. Cool. Uh, anything else anyone in chat wants to talk about before we get out of here? I think basically we're all just tired right now. We're tired of these yeah. crypto prices. We're tired of these GPU prices. We just want to play Wildlands with each other. Why can't we just be doing that, you know? Nobody wants to play Wildlands with me tonight. Screw oh, you guys. Oh, whoa. All right. Oh, I didn't mean to open that can of worms. Papa, Papa, please. Not not in front of the <laughs> viewers. <laughs> uh, so, wait. Nobody's going to play Wildlands with you tonight? I don't know. Hmm. That's mainly aimed at Dave. Oh, okay. Yeah, like honestly, I I would love to because I I'm actually caught up on editing now for the week, but because of that, I am dead tired and I'm probably gonna get a snack and like read Witcher for an hour and then go to bed. Like I'm just I'm I'm done, especially if I'm gonna come home and build a computer tomorrow. <laughs> I should probably get some rest tonight. All right, well, uh, thank you everybody for coming out to be a part of the show. Uh, Nichua, to answer your question, we'd like to do a Star Wars conversation, uh, but we talked about people seeing it more than once before we did that, so we'll have to check in and see if anyone has. I need to do that, yes. I'll go back with you and see it again. All right, if you yeah, want. let's do it. Okay. All right. All right, cool. Thanks, everybody, for coming out and being a part of the show. Uh, as always, Twitter is at Casual Shenaniga. YouTube is at... Well, it's just casual shenanigans on YouTube. We don't really use the at system for that. Um, Matthew Shea in chat asked, updated Metal Gear Solid 5 thoughts. I still don't like it, and I don't think it's a good game. Um, we're on iTunes. You can rate us. And that's pretty much it. Thank you for everyone coming out, being part of the show. We like some of you. We love less of you. We'll see you next time. <laughs> Stay casual. <laughs> Bye, guys.